Alright, so I am completely sick of all the low-end FDM printers that are still coming out onto the market. And they completely fall below the expectations of the consumers that now think 3D printing, because of the media, is so amazing and simple and easy. They buy these machines and then it gives the whole industry a bad name when they realize how crap they actually are. FDM printers aren't perfect, they're cheap, they're cheerful, but they're very much long overdue to be superseded by better technology. You know, all these machines under a thousand bucks have the same crap in them. They have a couple of Steffen motors, usually NEMA 17s, which are terribly inefficient. They have a constant current source, so, you know, they're drawing current all the time. If they lose track of where they are, you know, they bump something, the printer won't know, they'll throw themselves off calibration. It's, they're just a terrible solution. I don't know why printers haven't evolved to using servo motors yet. You know, you look at your sort of cheap and cheerful desktop, normal regular printer, like your, your inkjet, and you open it up, it has a really cheap DC brushed motor and a linear encoder. So the machine always knows where it is and it has no issues of, you know, if something bumps it, it will know what's happening and it'll shut down or um, compensate. Whereas all these 3D printers on the market use heavy and inefficient NEMA 17 steppers to do the same thing. And that means the machines are clunky, expensive still, and really noisy, like, you know, 3D printers, they're, they're using these stepper frequencies that are just so loud, and it's ridiculous, and the fact is, they've been doing it the same way for years. Alright, so what's tipped me over the edge is Hobby King. I'm sorry guys, I love your radio control products, but your recent 3D printer you've added is just a joke. Like, it's been so many years since it was okay to have something that was laser cut acrylic, and you assembled it together as a kit. That's not okay as a 3D printer, and there's various reasons why. Firstly, laser cut acrylic is not that dimensionally stable. You know, you're 3D printing with ABS, which has pretty much the same melting temperature as acrylic. So you're making a printer from, you know, a material that's going to soften at the same temperatures as you're printing the material on the printer. It's why, like, the temperature um, expansion of the frame is going to throw calibration completely off. How can you expect any sort of accuracy from a machine that's made from plastic? Like, it's, forget it. I don't know why I didn't go with sheet metal, you know, a simple frame design. It's, it, it's just, it's beyond belief, like, the machine just looks terrible. And I'm sorry, I know it's cheap, I know it's a kit, I know it's accessible, but it's just going to ruin people's expectations, because they'll get into 3D printing thinking, you know, this machine's good, and then they'll probably never get a print off it. And this goes beyond the cheap printers. My experience with the MakerBot 5th generation printers was shocking. I, like, this is a $4,000 printer that never really worked we had to return it, and there's various reasons why, like, its own calibration offset was wrong, and you couldn't do anything till a recent firmware upgrade where you could offset it manually, so to counteract the machines being crap, you could offset it in software. It's just pathetic, like, these FDM machines are just really, really disappointing. I think it's reached a point where everyone's run out of ideas, and the consumers have now realized that all these machines are pretty rubbish. So, I think, yeah, it's going to be very much like the dot-com crash where all these companies with big ideas are all just going to go into the ether very quickly and there'll only be a few surviving. And, you know, to be honest, my two cents, I don't think 3D Systems is going to be one of those companies. Their approach at consumer printers has been a complete failure, really. You know, you look at the machine, the companies they bought, so Bits from Bytes, they bought the 3D Touch. My experience with 3D Touch was it was a complete rubbish printer. You know, non-heated bed printing ABS. How is that ever going to work? It didn't. <laughs> so, you know, they bought Bits and Bytes and brought out the, the Cube X, which was a Bits from Bytes made prettier with three PLA nozzles and it just managed to print three of nothing because it never worked properly. Then they brought out, you know, the Cube Pro and the Cube Trio and all, all just, you know, you know it's all the same crap technology wrapped in different covers but it's still the same it's still completely unreliable so I think there's gonna be another company I don't know who will emerge through this with a new technology that is simple to use maybe not the best quality but works and the price point actually makes sense so yeah guys stick cheap server motors in your machines you get lower current, you can drop the current um, capacity down your power supply down, you can get cheaper components, machine weighs less so there's less shipping, stuff like that, you know, it's, it's, this approach to just copying the same theme 
that is really stifling the industry. Anyway, I had to get this off my chest. I'm sorry, guys. I will very rarely do rants, but the Hobby King printer just pushed me over the edge. I mean, come on, guys. It's just, it just looks terrible. <laughs> the print volume is, like, smaller in height than my Art Mini. Like, it's just, forget it. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, usually I do very positive things in the 3D printing field, so watch out for those. If you want to subscribe, please feel free, though. I won't blame you if you don't subscribe after watching this video. Anyway, I'll see you again here soon on Maker's Muse. Thanks, guys. Bye.